This video demonstrates how to set up solid cam properties and generate a coordinate system and stock for a given piece of material. So I've finished with my CAD design now. The next step is to open SolidCam. Before I do that, let me explain a little bit about what SolidCam is. SolidCam is not a piece of SolidWorks, it's an add-in. But it's, ad it's an add-in that comes in as a lot of separate tabs within the SolidWorks environment. So if I get tired of all of these menus, or maybe I don't have them all, if I right-click on the menu on the ribbon tree, I get a selection of the ones that are currently on. You can see in my case solid cam operations has been turned off. It's okay, I'm going to leave it off. I actually don't need very many of these, but I'll leave them on all on just for demonstration purposes. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to solid cam part tab and within that let's take a look at our cam settings. It's important I do this before I actually create a cam part. Um, because some of these settings I won't be able to change after the part has been created. So we get a solid cam settings menu that comes up and the most important one I want you to look at is units and make sure that units are set to inch. So check that, make sure everything's okay. So we'll click OK. And now we'll click a new cam project. This operation can be done just with simple milling, so we'll use a milling operation. And I get an, an option here whether I want this to be external or internal. I want this to be external. It's going to sa be saved as a separate file extension from the SolidWorks part. Um, I'll let that name just be P4 Housing. That's fine. And we're going to put it in the same directory that the part file is in. And again, I'm making sure that the units is here. If you do not get this dialog, it's OK. I'll show you how to get back to where you can change this as long as your units were already set up to be in inches. So I'll click OK. And what has happened now is I've now entered into a wizard to demonstrate what's um, to set up all of the coordinate systems. If you don't go into the wizard, that's okay. So actually I'm going to start off here not using the wizard at all and then we'll come back and fix it. So let's see if I can just click a check. It says undefined coordinate system. It's going to make me define things, but I'm going to define them wrong on purpose so I can show you how to do it from another screen. So really the only thing I need to do is define a coordinate system and I'll select this face. It thinks it knows where we want to do it. So I'll click the check mark. And I'm not going to worry about e any of these right now. We'll set them up later. It's saying that it's ready to go ahead and make the parts, make the file. So I'll click that, I'll click check mark. Um, some other things that I've done, I've now lost my tabs here. So right click and I'm going to turn on SolidCam 2.5D I also have put some shortcuts up here if you would rather work by the shortcuts instead of the tabs that's also fine to remove them or to add them you go to view these are toolbars and I've turned on the 2.5 so if I check it again it turned off the 2.5 toolbar. I'm going to do it one more time to gain a little bit more screen space. So view, toolbars, and this one was called solid cam recognition. I'll turn that off. It gave me just a little bit more of window for using in the screen. Alright, so if you didn't get the the wizard, you just dropped right here into the SolidWorks a solid cam um, part and everything else has already been set up for you. So let's go through each of these options. For the machine if I double click menu pulls up and we can see what our options are. There's a lot of things here. There's a lot of things here that we're really not going to touch. The biggest one I want you to make sure is that your post processor that you're using is the G-Milling 3X and again there's lots of options. This is the one I want you to use. Everything else should be okay for what we're doing in this class. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. Now the coordinate manager, we've got a coordinate system that's actually not where I want it to be. 
So let's edit the coordinate manager. I'm going to right click and click open the coordinate system. This is a, a machine position and then a work position relative to that machine position. So what we're going to do is start with this position 1 and edit it. And the first thing I want to do is actually move my coordinate system. So let's click edit coordinate system. The directions in the project state that the x-axis, that the slot ought to be running parallel to the x-axis. The coordinate system that I already had had that. Um, so that, that part was already set up. It also said the face of the slot should be parallel with the y with the y x plane that also is already set up. It says the origin should be set 0 0.05 inches above the part. That is not true. That's in the wrong spot. So we need to change that. And then looking down at the z axis, the origin should be at the bottom left corner of the part. So that means if I'm looking down at the z axis, the origin is in the correct location of the part. So really the only thing wrong is that I'm sitting exactly on the face instead of up a little bit. If this isn't what your coordinate system looks like, just click Select Face and choose this top face. And it's going to regenerate where it thinks it needs to be. There's all kinds of changes you can make. So for instance, if your z-axis is not pointing up, you can flip around the y. So now my z-axis is pointing up. And what we need to do is we need to set the delta here. And your delta might not be expanded. So you might need to expand the delta. And we want the z-axis to be 0 0.05 above. And when I hit Tab, I now see my new coordinate system. So the black was the original coordinate system before we finished editing. And the colored one is the one that we're going to move to. So this is where the origin system needs to be. It needs to be oriented like this. And it needs to be in that location. So by choosing fa select face and selecting the face, you should get it at this corner. And then all you should have to do is the delta to 0 0.05. And you might have to do some switching of the axes to make sure, make sure everything is in the right location. So let's see. I need to flip around x, y. So what I want to do is I want to turn this up. So I'm going to flip it around the x-axis until the z is in the correct location. And then I'll flip around the z-axis until my x is in the correct location. And now that, that system looks OK. So now that I'm finished with that, I'll click the check mark. And it's saying that the part is going to start at minus 0.005. I'm going to change that and let the part start at zero. What we're doing is we're going to take into account when we actually touch off the machine, we're going to touch off the machine from this corner, this coordinate system. And then we're going to face down about 50 thousandths to remove any kind of uh, issues with the flatness of that top face. So that's the reason we're doing this. So we've now edited our coordinate system. So I'll click the check mark. The next one to look at is the stock. So right click on stock and define stock. And what, what mine did through the wizard is it said the stock is exactly the correct size as the bounding box of the CAD. Um, if yours automatically filled something else in, it probably ex did it at these boxes, expanding these boxes. Um, make sure all of these are 0, except for we're going to add 50 thousandths in the positive z direction. And again, what you can see what's happened, the green box shows what the stock is expected to be. This is going to allow our stock to be right there at the top of the coordinate system. That gives me a physical something I can measure my tools off of to, to find my 0, 0, 0 point. So with that done, our stock is now defined. And we'll be ready to proceed to actually cut out some features.